This brief video provides an overview of the concept of event tree analysis. Although the technique is not much used in the process industries, the right side of a bow tire diagram is actually an event tree. So it is useful to understand how these, how these trees are developed and how they can be used. Event tree analysis uses the same logical and mathematical techniques as fault tree analysis, which is discussed in other videos in this series. Both are based on Boolean algebra. Whereas a fault tree analyzes how an undesirable top event may occur, an event tree considers the impact of the failure of a particular component or item in the system and works out what the effect of such a failure will be on overall system risk or reliability. Event trees use an inductive approach, whereas fault trees are deductive. This slide shows some of the books that we have written on the topics of process risk and safety management. Details to do with event tree analysis can be found in Chapter 16 of the book Process Risk and Reliability Management. Our homepage address is shown along with the page that lists the latest videos that we have prepared. The initiating event in an event tree will usually fall into one of the following four categories. Failures or unsafe conditions in individual items of equipment, human error, utility failures, and external events such as hurricanes or earthquakes. Here we see a sketch showing an event tree for a situation in which a pressure vessel is being cooled with cooling water. If the flow of the cooling water fails then we have the potential for a catastrophic failure of the vessel if the various safeguards that protect the vessel fail. The first column shows the event cooling water fails. We put a letter Y to show that this event has taken place. Our first safeguard is instrument response. If the instruments recognize the problem and take corrective action, then we follow the upper Y route. It is shown with a dashed line because we are not really interested in pursuing this line anymore since the unsafe condition has been taken care of. However, if the instruments do not respond properly, we have the letter N and we follow the solid red line. The next safeguard is operator response. The operator technician recognizes that a high pressure situation is developing and that the instruments have not responded correctly. So he or she takes corrective action. Once more, if the correct action is taken, we follow the yellow, we follow the dashed yes line if the operator does not take the proper action, then we continue to follow the solid red line. We come to the next safeguard, which is an interlock, probably triggered by a safety instrumented system. Once more, we can follow either the dashed or the solid red line. The next and final safeguard is a pressure safety relief valve. If it does not work, then the red line takes us to the event shell rupture. The vessel has failed. We can quantify, quantify the event tree as shown here. The probability of cooling water failure is set at 1. In other words, we define this event as having occurred. The instrument response has a probability of failure of 0.2, the operator of 0.75, the interlock 0.001, and the pressure safety relief valve of 0.1. We multiply these numbers together, like an AND gate in a fault tree, and come up with a final value of 0 0.00015. We are saying, therefore, that, that if the cooling water fails, the chance of a vessel rupture is 1 in 67,000. As with the discussion to do with fault trees, it is important to check for common cause failures. For example, if we have plugage in the system, it could make the instruments and the pressure safety relief valve not work properly and hence 
our chance of failure will be much higher than we have calculated. There are various degrees of system failure. This tree shows that if the interlock is called upon to work, the system will fail to a safe condition, but it will have to be shut down, leading to economic loss. If the interlock does not work, the PSRV opens, and once more the system will be safe, but the facility will have to be shut down, and there will be product loss through the relief valve. Different trees can be developed for different levels of seriousness or different types of events. This sketch shows how an event tree can differentiate between instantaneous and prolonged releases of flammable hydrocarbons. An instantaneous release can lead to a fireball or explosion. A more prolonged release can lead to a jet fire or a flash fire. Fault trees and event trees can be combined as shown in this sketch. The gates in the event tree are treated as top events of multiple fault trees. So, for example, one of the event tree gates could be loss of electrical power. That term then becomes the top event of a loss of electrical power fault tree. When using fault trees as subsets of event trees, it is important to identify the common cause or interdependent events and to enter them separately into the tree's structure. Fault trees and event trees make up the two sides of a bow tie diagram as shown here. The fault tree describes the, the series of events that can cause a hazard to occur the event tree shows how it is mitigated if it does occur. This concludes our brief overview of event tree analysis. To learn more, please read Chapter 16 of our book, Process, Risk and Reliability Management. Thank you.